Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Kindle Black Podcast. Uh, today is our new product uh, introduction, and we have our PM Jason here. Hi, Jason. Mm-hmm. Hi, everyone. He will introduce the new two bay NAS TS254 ID to us. Well, basically, we have a previous version called TS254 and 251A, I think. Mm-hmm. And now we have the brand new 251B. So let's check on that. Let's look at the slides. And uh, we can see that the TS251B is using the totally different front view by the, the, the plastic. It's a plastic yeah, it's cover. Uh, compared to the TS251A mm-hmm. and 251 Plus, this one is a brand new housing, mm-hmm. uh, similar to the newer TS53BE uh, series. Uh, but it's in white color, target for the home uh, segment. And I think the 251B is so far the first like home home use NAS that can support the HD uh, sort the PCI UN. Uh, yes. So uh, two bay only for two bay. Yeah, two bay. Uh, this one is uh, currently it is only available in the two bay version, mm-hmm. and uh, it is only uh, NAS in its class with a PCI expansion slot. And yeah. uh, later on, uh, you will learn uh, what kind of expand expandability is available with the expansion slot. Okay, so mm-hmm. let's get the detail of the hardware and the design of this. Yes. Okay, so this uh, TS251B is powered by a dual-core Intel processor that is based on the uh, dual-core J3355. Uh, it is a codename Apollo Lake processor, and uh, the frequency is uh, 2.0 gigahertz by default, mm-hmm. and uh, it can automatically burst up to uh, 2.5 gigahertz when needed. Okay, and uh, the memory design we design is in a dual-channel setup, so uh, which means. Uh, you will find the two available memory slots, which is are uh, in the DDR3LO and then up to 1866. So basically it supports the uh, high uh, fast DDR frequency, okay? And uh, up to maximum eight gigabyte memory total. So uh, since it is in dual channel design, so you can install up to four gigabyte plus four gigabyte, sure. total eight. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the SKU, we offer two different SKUs. First one is uh, TS251B-2G. Uh, in there, in this one, you will find uh, one single two gigabyte memory module. And then the second version is uh, TS251B-4G. And in this, you can find uh, a single four gigabyte uh, memory module. So all the, uh, the, the purpose is to, so when you get the NAS, uh, and then in the future, you want to upgrade the memory, it's very easy because sure. uh, you just need to add uh, one more. Uh, to make a pair to increase your memory. Mm-hmm. So besides the upgrade memory feature, uh, this one also have a, has a HDMI output. Mm-hmm. So you can use it for some of the advanced uh, uh, features, you know, which I'll talk about later. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there's also an expansion slot and you will learn uh, how go over what kind of uh, QNAP expansion cards you can install on this device. Of course. Okay. And here let's take uh, the, the front view. So. Uh, front cover, it is a magnetic front cover, mm-hmm. and we provide a lockable design so you can prevent uh, your kids uh, by accidentally remove the drives. Mm-hmm. And once you remove the front cover, as you will see on the top left, uh, there are two hard drive trays, and each one can support either a 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA drives, mm-hmm. and uh, each of them gets a SATA 6 gigabit. Uh, transfer uh, interface. Mm. And uh, on the right hand side you will see uh, the usual uh, NAS uh, designs such as the power button, the various LEDs, and uh, also you will find a convenient USB 3.0 port with a copy button. Okay. So that means that uh, you can uh, connect an external USB drive so you can set up the backup job uh, in our QTS and then so when you connect the external drive you can push the copy button and the backup job will be triggered, triggered automatically to, to finish the, to do the uh, backup job. Sure. And so let's take a look at the rear side. Here the most important uh, feature is on the top. You will find uh, one of the PCIe slot uh, with a Gen 2 by 2 spec. Okay, So you can easily uh, provide uh, enough bandwidth for this, uh, this class of uh, processor. And uh, on the left hand side, you will find uh, the audio input and output. So with this, you can connect uh, some uh, audio input devices, output devices such as, uh, uh, for example, uh, the dynamic, dynamic microphones to 
use with our Ocean KTV uh, karaoke app. And then uh, for the audio line out, you can connect it to uh, amplifier or uh, power the speaker to uh, uh, play back the audio on the NAS. Mm -hmm. And uh, also with the traditional tradition of QNAP, uh, you will also find uh, one single HDMI uh, output port that is capable of 4K. So actually you can directly uh, play the multimedia on the store on the NAS with the QNAP's hybrid disk station and the HD player. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's also uh, three of the USB 2.0 and uh, one of the USB 3.0 on the back, mm -hmm. which means uh, uh, besides the USB hard drive, you can also connect, uh, for example, the uninterrupted uh, power system UPS and the printer, mm -hmm. and then uh, also the USB keyboard mouse to work with uh, the yeah, virtual yeah. machines. Yeah, and uh, we'll get to more about it later. And there's a uh, one single uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet port, so uh, with the powerful uh, 2.0 gigahertz uh, processor, it can uh, easily reach uh, over 110 megabytes per second. Sure. With this uh, gigabit, can be easily saturated. Sure. And uh, then we also have to put a speaker there, so we don't have to. You no longer have to guess uh, what happened to the NAS when you hear uh, the beep sound because. Uh, now the NAS will also announce the various uh, system errors to you, such as uh, the NAS status, the hard drive status, and then also when the backup backup job has been uh, initiated or finished. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and so uh, how can you install the hard drives uh, with the 3.5 hard drives? And we made it simple. So with a tray design. You don't need a screwdriver to install a hard drive, especially it's a, a tourist installation. So with a 2.5 inch uh, hard drive or SSDs, you do need to, uh, uh, like a step one, you need to remove one of the side uh, panel and then uh, secure those with uh, hard drive screws. Okay. And uh, another thing about uh, the PCI expansion uh, adapter, how can you install it to the NAS? Uh, it is also very easy. Just look at uh, step one through four. So in uh, step one, first you have to remove the front cover, and the second step uh, you remove the two screws on the back, mm -hmm. and then the third step is you can now uh, lift the uh, one side of the cover, and then you have uh, access to the uh, PCIe slot, and then also memory slots that I'll talk about later in that demo. Okay. Now the next slide, this one, uh, since uh, this is a uh, target for the high-end home market, so of course you will, you will find all the available uh, multimedia features on this uh, TS251B. Uh, first of all is the HDMI 4K output, and then the speakers for uh, playback the music. Okay? And then uh, the most important thing uh, that's liked by many home users is the transcoding, the video transcoding. So uh, thanks to the powerful processor and the graphics, uh, the GPUs, and it can support up to uh, two channel 4K real time transcoding. And besides that, uh, you can also use a uh, CMA28 from QNAP App Center uh, on the NAS to stream uh, the various uh, NAS content on the NAS to the various uh, network devices such as uh, Apple TV, uh, Chromecast, your smart TV, or even through HDMI. And uh, with this, uh, we have an embedded uh, IR receiver on the front, so you can purchase uh, an optional QNAP RM IR004 with this IR remote control to go with our hybrid desk station. So that way, you can uh, play back the content uh, right on your couch. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of the uh, video transcoding, yeah. So with this uh, powerful graphics, integrate graphics in there. Uh, you can use uh, many applications to perform the uh, transcoding. So, for example, whether it's from uh, QNAP uh, applications, or you can install some third-party software uh, to perform the transcoding uh, tasks. So, one of the famous one is the Plex Media Server. So, with that, you can actually suppose uh, utilize the hardware transcoding resources. But uh, there's a catch. So, let's learn more about the Plex Media Server. Okay. So Plex Media Server, I think uh, many of our uh, users already know this uh, famous uh, uh, media streaming software. Uh, it's actually quite popular uh, all over in the world. 
And so basically, it can uh, collect, it centralize all your media files, and then try to get uh, the characteristics of the media files, and then get the metadata from the internet to form your uh, media library. So with that, uh, also it presents a very friendly uh, user interface, whether it's uh, on the, over the browser or with its own best clients on many, many different devices. So it makes the uh, media uh, storage and the sharing very easy. Okay? And how, through what the method you can uh, stream the content or watch the content on the NAS with the Plex server, there are several different methods. Uh, first one is to look at, uh, look at it one by one. On the top, uh, you will have a different uh, media stream devices mm -hmm. from uh, Roku, uh, uh, Google Chromecast, uh, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV, and uh, so forth. And also, if you have a smart TV with uh, DLNA capability, you can also stream the content. Or, uh, Plex Client is actually also available on some of the Samsung, I think, and also Sony TVs. So you can install the, the app on those uh, smart TVs directly through the App Store. And with the computers, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, Plex has its own web interface, so you can also play content uh, directly with the browser as well. And if you have an iOS or Android, you can also install the Plex uh, player on your iOS uh, mobile devices. Sure. Yeah. And uh, with the HDMI port on the TS251B, then you can also uh, install the uh, Plex Home Theater, mm -hmm. and uh, which you can output the content through the NAS HDMI port uh, for the right uh, playback. So there are actually very many, many different uh, devices that can work with the Plex mm -hmm. uh, for media streaming. Okay. Now, uh, there are a little bit of uh, difference between the free membership and uh, the paid membership. So the paid membership is called Plex Pass. Now to utilize the GPU power of the TS251B for uh, hardware accelerated transcoding, then you will need uh, to uh, get the Plex Pass membership. Okay. And for more information about the, the membership course, feel free to check out the Plex website. Mm -hmm. And but uh, it's just important to let you guys know that uh, be sure to get uh, Plex space if you want to use the uh, hardware transcoding. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, so speaking of uh, hardware transcoding, we can take a look at uh, the different uh, user interface by Plex. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, real-time transcoding. Uh, so when you uh, try to play back uh, some content okay, on Plex, then you will ask you, you can choose a different uh, uh, resolutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so couple with the resolution, there are different bit rates. So the, the idea is that uh, depends on your network bandwidth quality. You may you need to choose the one that best suits you. For example, if you are on a four G network, or if uh, the the hotel Wi Fi is very slow, then of course you want to choose the seven twenty p or lower yes. to have a smooth uh, video playback. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, the next one is offline transcoding. Because on um, the real-time transcoding, it uses uh, CPU power. And then previously, we mentioned that uh, uh, the TS251B is capable of up to maximum two concurrent 4K video transcoding, right? But what if you have uh, more users that want to uh, connect to your NAS and uh, watch the video concurrently? Uh, no problem, you can try to uh, set up an offline transcoding job in advance. Mm -hmm. So this means uh, when you, on the user base, you choose optimize, and then you can select a predefined uh, settings for this video, and then Plex will start to transcode the video into a, a smaller files or a different, uh, uh, the same, same resolution, but a different format, you know, one that's more compatible with your devices. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that way, when more devices are connected to the NAS, the Plex will, use, will stream just the Pre transcoded the video. That way, it doesn't require much of the CPU and the GPU resources. Mm -hmm. That way, it allows you, allows more users can connect to the NAS directly. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's the the art of uh, offline transcoding. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, previously we mentioned uh, TS two five one B has a PCI slot, yes. right? So what kind of a PCI card you can install? Uh, QNAM actually has uh, many, many PCI cards. Uh, if you follow our video and uh, seminar, we also introduce many uh, different ones. Yeah. So the first uh, tier, first type of uh, 
expansion card will be the QNet the QN2 expansion card. So with the QN2 cards, it adds basically uh, two of the M.2 SSD ports to the NAS, and uh, some of the QN2 cards uh, besides M.2 SSD ports, but also gives you one of the 10 gb ST ports. Yeah, or you can also install a pure 10, gig 10 gigabit uh, network expansion card to add the 10 gigabit uh, uh, port to your NAS. If you don't uh, purchase the QN2 card, you can just get a 10 gig card. And then uh, if you have uh, some of the super fast USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, SSDs, those portable SSDs, uh, you can also purchase the QNET uh, USB 3.1 expansion card. So uh, this one will give you a uh, Type A, two, two ports of the USB Type A ports that, that are capable of uh, uh, 10 gigabits. Uh, so don't worry about it because uh, some of your devices may come with a Type C or with those SSDs. You can still use a C2A cable or use a converter to connect those uh, super fast SSDs. Right? And now the third type of um, card will be the QNAP uh, wireless extension card, the QWA 2600. And uh, basically, after you install to the NAS, you can set up uh, wireless networks to uh, uh, let your wireless devices. Uh, such as the cameras and uh, tablets to connect to the NAS directly and then, um, get the content or record the video. So it's, uh, you can uh, form a private network that's more secure and then have its own uh, ded dedicated uh, bandwidth. Okay. And now, so let's take a look at how you can install a PISA expansion card to the TS251B. Of course. Okay. So let's uh, switch to the, uh, the desktop here. Okay. So here I have a prepare. So let me move the mouse. Uh, I have a prepare a TS251B. You will see the front and then in the back. There are PCI, as a PCI slot and some IOs. So first I will show you how you can uh, install the hard drives and then the PCI card and also the memory. Okay. So first of all, uh, you can lock the front cover or unlock it. Once you unlock it, you can remove it. And then you have access to the uh, hard drives, the hard drive trays. Okay, let me remove it. There is a hard drive tray. And I have uh, installed a 3.5 inch hard drive here. So to install a hard drive, it is very easy. You simply just uh, remove the side panel, install the hard drives, and then put them back. Yeah, then you finish the installation. Now, once you have uh, removed all the uh, front cover and the hard drive trays, uh, you want to move to the back, and then you have uh, two of the screws here that you want to remove. Okay. So let me remove this. this. Once you remove the two screws, then uh, it is very easy to uh, take the cover apart. Okay, so simply just slide open. Then you can lift the cover. Okay. Now after you have removed the cover, you have access to see here memory two memory themes, two memory slots here. So you can easily just uh, install the memory. To here, okay. Now to uh, install a PCIe card, see you will see there's a PCIe slot. PCI slot here. It's a bit dark. Uh, you, yeah, the black one. <laughs> and so first of first of all, you want to remove the the, the rear cover here, okay. So again, there's a screw. We recently just launched a lot of video. Yeah. About the AC2600. So, uh -huh. if you're trying to get to know how can this wireless adapter help you, you can check our video and maybe when you purchase, uh, considering of purchasing the ts 2 b you can you can get to know more about how you can make the combination. Yes. Uh, so here I have prepared a 10G uh, network card here. Uh, by default, uh, some. Most of the cars will have the the L-shaped uh, bracket, the bracket yeah, for for the on the card. Uh, but uh, because uh, 
the NAS is so small, so for many of the QNAP uh, tower based models, uh, it uses as a flat bracket. Mm -hmm. So you will need to, to replace the bracket uh, with the flat wow. one here. And uh, don't worry about it, if you purchase a QNAP expansion card, it is always included. Yeah. So we always include our brackets, that's, that will help you install any of the QNAP NAS. All right? yes. So once you have uh, changed the bracket to the flat one, then you can just uh, install it here onto the PCI slot. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you have uh, installed the pantry card, and then you just put the screw back, and then put back uh, the cover, and then put the screw back, then you finish the, with the PCI card installation. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, fairly easy. Now, uh, let's return to the uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so after we see how to install the PCI card and the DVR and then of course the hard disk, mm -hmm. the next part is that since we just mentioned that we have a lot of expansion card, mm -hmm. now we'll take a look at them. Yeah, so here are some of the accessories for the TS251B. Mm -hmm. So from the top, you will see the available memory modules in 2GB and 4GB mm -hmm. for you to upgrade the memory. And then uh, the various expansion cards, uh, USB 3.1, the 10 gigabit card, uh, the wireless adapter, and the QN2 uh, cards. Mm -hmm. And then to go with the QN2, we also provided the 256 gigabyte M.2 SATA SSD for you to install it. Okay. So uh, after this, let, let's take a look at how much performance you will get when you install a 10 gig card with uh, the uh, SSD. So this is uh, a this uh, slide shows you when you install two, two of the SSDs, okay, two of the SSDs, 2.5 SSD in RAID 0 onto the NAS, mm -hmm. and what kind of performance data you will get. So with the one pantry port, uh, and then the SSDs in RAID 0 uh, on the NAS, you get a, a read performance of almost uh, 622 megabytes per second, and uh, for write performance, it's uh, almost 430 megabytes per second. So it is at least four times faster than the competition, right? With the 10 gigabit uh, card. So uh, before talking anymore, let's try to uh, look at the live demo. Okay. The first live demo here is the performance. Mm -hmm. So I switch to the uh, user uh, the computer. So here I have a TS251B and then uh, with uh, SSD, two of the SSDs here, okay. and then I have set up a RAID 0 here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the performance with the IOMeter. Okay. So first of all, let's take a look at the read performance. Okay. Let's try to check it. So with the two SSDs in RAID 0, you'll see the, the read performance is like 700 megabytes per second with IOMeter. Okay. And uh, so after we finish the uh, read performance, let's take a look at uh, the write performance. So it will be the, for both of the tests will be the sequential read and write with a 64 KB. Mm -hmm. And uh, the NAS TF251B has a two of the 2.5 inch SSDs in RAID 0. So let's begin the test. So you will see the performance with the write is uh, also, also around the 500 megabytes per second. Yes. So thanks to the, available uh, 10 PCI slot with a 10G card. So you can actually really bring up the performance yes. uh, on this TS251B uh, yes. with the uh, use of SSDs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's switch, switch back to the PowerPoint slide. All right, so after we have finished demo the uh, uh, SSDs, pure SSDs, now let's take a look. Uh, uh, what if uh, you want to leave the SATA ports for high capacity hard drive, right? Because uh, many people probably want to use the uh, install hard drives, okay, on those uh, two two uh, yes. slots because uh, you know hard drive still computer SSD still offers uh, more capacity, yes. right? And but uh, they they still want performance. What can they do? Don't worry about it. Uh, like uh, we mentioned before, the PCI slots you can install the QN2 card from QNAP to add the SSDs. So after you add the SSDs to your TS251B, then you can set up the most basic one, the SSD cache. So with that, uh, you will lose the SSD uh, storage capacity, but uh, it can help accelerate 
the random IOs of your data input output, and uh, the also uh, for your, for example, some database usage can really uh, accelerate it. Now, you can also choose to set it up as a Q tier. So Q tier, you can with SSD, you can set up as an SSD tier. So that way you get a, a continuous performance. So if you want to have a real time performance boost, then choose the uh, SSD cache. But if you have a continuous performance uh, uh, acceleration uh, with a hard to call data in and out, then uh, be sure to choose uh, set up as a QT with those uh, SSDs. And also benefit with QT is that uh, you can still use the M.2 SSD as to store your data. Now, so what kind of uh, QN2 card you can install onto the TS251B? The first one is uh, pure SSD only and SATA. Mm -hmm. So with this uh, model QM2S220A, uh, it can support uh, up to two of the M.2 SATA SSDs. Okay. And the next one is uh, the PCIe, the ME -ME PCIe. So with this one, you can install up to two of the PCIe and ME. So it is very important for uh, our audience to know is actually when you buy M.2 SSDs, there are two different uh, mainstream uh, spec. Mm -hmm. The first one is uh, the previous one, the M.2 SATA SSDs. Mm -hmm. The second one is the M.2 NVMe PCI SSDs. So it depends on what kind of SSD you have, or it depends on what kind of QN2 card you have, mm -hmm. you have to choose the right SSD, all right? okay. or the right QN2 card either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what if you want both SSD and uh, the 10 port, mm -hmm. then QNAP also provides uh, two different cards. You know, one is with a SATA SSD, the other one is with a ME and PCI SSD. So both of these cards have a 10 port built in. So not only you can use the SSD to uh, enhance your performance, but you also get the 10 port to bring out the maximum performance of the NAS. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, QN2 2S 10G 1T gives you both SSD, SAT SSDs, and also the 10G. And then the next one is the PCI SSDs with the 10G port. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, one benefit is that uh, all these cards support the multiple speed, like uh, you see there. So it's not, it is not just 10G based, it does also uh, 5G, 2.5G, and 1G. Mm -hmm. And so this is a perfect to go with the QNAP. Uh, the 10 switch, switch, right, QSSW, yes. because, uh, for example, if you your network infrastructure is only uh, K5, mm -hmm. then together with the QNAP 10 switch, you don't need to upgrade your existing wiring. You can easily, you buy the QNAP 10 switch, you buy this QN2 cards, and then you buy QNAP NAS, and your PC, you install a QNAP 10 card, mm -hmm. okay. then you can easily upgrade your network to a 5G speed. Yes. Yeah. And then if you if your uh, wiring is uh, consists of a uh, cat six, then you can upgrade to a ten G speed. Yeah, so it is uh, very future ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So enough talk with all the different Q and two cards. Now let's talk about the the, comp yes. the component and okay. the performance. Yeah. So with a uh, QT uh, performance, uh, because uh, like I said, uh, some use probably most users want to have uh, install hard drives for those two. Uh, front trace right, for the best, the largest capacity, then how can you bring out the best performance? So let me demo it. So I'm going to install a, a, a Pendry Base T, the QM2 card there onto the NAS with the M.2 SSDs, the SATA version, and then also hard drives, all in red one. Okay. So let's switch to the, right the computer live demo. Okay. okay. Here I have a, a second TS251B. So you will see I have uh, set up a QT with two different uh, red groups. Mm -hmm. So the first one is uh, with uh, the high speed tier with the two of the M.2 SATA SSDs. Okay, this one is uh, installed on the QN2 card. And uh, as you can see here, uh, in red one, so the performance will be one SSD. Sure. Okay, the second group will be the hard drive. So you have, you see I have a one terabyte hard drive in red one. So the performance will be just uh, one hard drive, right? Yes. So how fast is a hard drive? <laughs> 100 is something megabyte per second, right? So uh, if I just 
install hard drives in RAID 1, then I'm stuck with the hard drive performance. Yes. But uh, thanks to the QN2 card, it gives my NAS both the M.2 SSD and also the 10G port. Okay? So let's take a look at how much performance you will get with this QT setup. So I have a mounted uh, drive of the Y folder here, and then let's try to check the read performance. Yeah, so thanks to the QT and SSDs, so you can see even with the two hard drives, the performance is still quite good. Okay, and this is a read performance. So basically, it's very, it's almost the same as the previous uh, one, which is pure SSDs in RAID, uh, RAID zero. Mm -hmm. And let's try to check the the uh, the write performance. Yes. So again, this is a screenshot right uh, with a 64 KB, and let's try to check the performance here. Yeah, Ooh. so you can see the white performance uh, with the SSD they still can get up to uh, like a 400, almost 500 megabyte per second with this. So again, uh, QT uh, is a, a good uh, uh, choice if you have a uh, uh, hard drive as your main uh, storage volume, mm -hmm. and then use SSD to accelerate uh, the data transfer time. Sure. Okay, let's switch back to the home point. All right, so after we finish the demo, then let's take a look at what's new in the QTS 4.3.5. They can, uh, because uh, with all the QN2 cards talk about SSDs, right? And actually there are some uh, advantages and also disadvantages about SSDs over the long time usage. So here is the uh, analysis uh, we have done in the QNET NAS. So first of all is, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, performance speed in the first table on the left. Uh, hard drive is actually only 100 to 200 megabytes per second. Uh, and then, uh, but with also with the very low IOPS in random access, and with SSDs, uh, easily can get, get uh, 300 megabytes per second or more. And the IOPS is uh, many times better than the hard drives. Okay, and also uh, you will get uh, if you look at on the right table on the right hand side. Uh, this is an analysis of the SSD cost. Mm -hmm. So you will see recently, especially this year, the cost of the SSD has really dropped a lot. Mm -hmm. So not just 2.5 inch, also uh, M.2 SSD. So it is a perfect timing to start to use the SSD on the NAS. But uh, to use the SSD on the NAS, uh, it is important how you choose the NAS, what kind of uh, brand you buy the NAS mm -hmm. to be uh, SSD aware. We call it SSD aware smart storage. And QNAB is the one. Okay, so why do, why do I say QNAB is the number one to go when uh, choosing the SSD smart NAS? Uh, here uh, is another data we uh, you, we show you that uh, uh, when you buy SSD, okay, on the table on the on the first column, uh, this is the, the actual physical size. So all of them will be 256 gigabyte. But uh, depends depends on what kind of SAD uh, model and also the what kind of SAD grade. It can be a consumer grade or enterprise grade. Mm -hmm. uh, if you buy a consumer grade, uh, the SAD vendor may not leave so much uh, of a provision in the space. So you will see that on the first row. Typically for a consumer grade SSD is only about seven percent of a provision is bound by the SSD vendor. Mm -hmm. So you will see that the uh, actual usable storage, you get the highest one, which is 2338 mm -hmm. uh, gigabyte with this SSD. But for some uh, uh, more, uh, some, some of the more expensive on the enterprise level SSD, you will see that actually the vendor uh, reserve more uh, SSD space for over provision. This is for uh, to help uh, increase the performance and also increase the reliability for the garbage collection operation to reduce it. So that's why, why you see some of the more, uh, what I say, strange or less capacity on some of the SSDs, okay? So this is uh, done by the SSD vendor themselves, okay? So with the QNAP uh, new software defined SSD uh, over provisioning technology in QTS 4.3.5, we actually allow the users to define a pre-allocated uh, over provision mm -hmm. area on the SSD, right? So that way uh, you will always be sure that uh, the SSD 
can be kept at the optimum performance. Mm -hmm. okay. So in addition to the, as you can see from this table, from below to the top, so in addition to in addition to the SSD's internal uh, over provision area, uh, with QTS you can also set up uh, the different percentage of over provision area so that uh, you have a consistent uh, performance. Okay. Now uh, this one just shows you uh, why QNAP is uh, moving towards this uh, software defined uh, over provision in SSD uh, where storage. Because uh, based on uh, various uh, uh, studies and reports, you will see that uh, the more provision area is uh, is kept is uh, being kept, then uh, you will see the more pro better performance and uh, the longer life the SSD will get. Okay, so the key advantage of this new feature in QTS 4.3.5 is uh, you actually in the past uh, choosing a a good SSD or the right SSD is important for for the NAS. Okay, but uh, we actually, as a system vendor, we try to make the choice easier for our users. Mm -hmm. So by employing this uh, technology, the SSD aware technology, actually, we you no longer have to spend much money on the more expensive SSDs. Basically, by allowing more space being reserved, actually, you can achieve the same performance or the same longevity with uh, consumer grade SSDs with this feature. Mm -hmm. So it further down reduces your total cost of ownership. As you all know that when you buy a NAS, you buy hard drives, you buy SSDs, you buy expansion power, it can be some uh, some investment, right? But uh, with this technology we can actually lower your your total cost mm -hmm. of ownership. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, finally, let's take a look at the user interface here. So on the UI, uh, if you have a, if you are on a, a, a volume of pool by uh, previously created by the older version of QBS, then I'm sorry, but uh, you have to if you want to use this feature, uh, you have to back up your data and then create a new one with a uh, 4.3.5. That way, uh, you can uh, set up the over provision in the percentage of the SSDs with a new feature in 4.3.5. The way uh, to sum it up, you can uh, use uh, consumer grade SSDs and then still gain the performance and also the longer life of the long run on the NAS. All right. So that's a uh, uh, benefit of uh, using the uh, SSD over provisioning uh, in the new QTS. Sure. So also the ransomware has been a popular topic uh, in recent years, and then uh, many there are many news and cases on the net uh, talking about uh, how company loses the data or how uh, some are artists mm -hmm. that got the pictures leaked. Uh, so actually protecting the data is very important on NAS. So Kinder NAS has uh, enabled uh, essential all the current NAS models, even from the entry level models, right? Yes. So you can actually uh, perform a flat table snapshot on the NAS to keep uh, several versions of the, the, your files and then recover at any time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with the snapshot, uh, basically it, it is stored on the outside of the volume snapshot. That way uh, it's not, it is not affected when, when the virus is, uh, is coming. And also uh, you have, uh, it doesn't affect your planning when uh, how much storage you, you, you are you will need for your environment. And uh, take an example of the TS251B. Uh, if you purchase the 2 G 2 gigabyte SKU, then you have a maximum of the TT4 snapshot together and uh, for each volume 32. And if you purchase the 4 gigabyte version, or if you have upgraded your memory to 4 gigabyte or more, you will see the snapshot is uh, increased yeah, by two, up to 1,000 uh, yeah, 1024. You can do that 1024. And also the per volume per lung also increased to 256. Mm -hmm. So like again, more memory is better. Yeah, <laughs> and we made it we make it easy to upgrade memory on the 251B. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I think uh, this is our uh, virtual switch and uh, network and virtual switch from yeah. the latest version QTS 4.25, right? Yes. And basically, we have made a lot of huge change on the on the overview. Yes. Okay. So let's take a look at the 
overview page. Mm -hmm. So with this, uh, it's, you will see a large improvement with our network research in the upcoming QTS 4.3.5 is that we have uh, made an overhaul and we design of the, the software and also mm -hmm. user interface. Mm -hmm. So now it, it is even uh, easier to see the entire your network topology. Mm -hmm. You will see uh, which interface is uh, connected to the internet mm -hmm. and uh, which virtual machine is using which virtual switch or adapter. Yes. You know, right? And uh, also, we have previously mentioned about the QNAP, uh, QWAC 2600 uh, PCIe adapter. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, uh, when you install onto the TS251B, uh, there are actually many different uh, uh, features you can do. First one is, um, you know, about this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I know this more better than anyone yes. else because, <laughs> okay. Like two weeks ago, we just, you know, like we go, we went outside for a video shooting yes. and we went to some of our customers' home because mm -hmm. we used the AC2600 to help him to solve him, to solve the problem that he's got a weak Wi-Fi signal uh, in his home. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is why Jason and, and I, we, we just went there and we mm -hmm. set up the, the wireless extension solution for yes. him. And we do, we did uh, solve the Wi-Fi problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the feature is like, okay, maybe we know that bandwidth in, in like U, U, USA or Europe it is chargeable, so it's not like uh, unlimited. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the best way you stay home and you are using your Wi-Fi instead of using your own 4G. Mm -hmm. So uh, somehow some people they will like feel the weak Wi-Fi in some corner or some room in mm -hmm. their own they house. large home. Yeah. <laughs> With a backyard compared, compared, to, compared to their okay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, if you have, if you are a NAS user from QNAP, you can put, uh, you can use our uh, wireless adapter and just install it on the PCIe slot of your NAS, and then you set your uh, wireless adapter into like 2.4 gig mm -hmm. or uh, 2 gigahertz into two different bandwidth, and one for maybe your home use with the 5 gigahertz, and the mm -hmm. other one both you can use it with your surveillance system. Yeah. So uh, our AC2600 can like enlarge the size of the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. that, can the cover, Wi -Fi, yeah. that can cover your whole mm -hmm. places and uh, that can solve the problem. So yeah. we know that very well. Yes, and uh, another use case is about the uh, IP wireless IP camera, right? Of course. Yeah. So uh, because uh, this uh, wireless adapter can create a concurrent uh, 2.4G and uh, 5G wireless networks. Mm -hmm. And so uh, traditionally, your wireless cameras, IP cameras may connect to the router directly, yes. which are also connected to internet. Mm -hmm. And if you if you search Google, uh, you will find that uh, a few months ago, Cisco has uh, or some other security issues reports that uh, some routers are actually are vulnerable to the internet. Yes. Yeah, that way, uh, if you they will also make your IP camera exposed to the internet, mm -hmm. right? So with the uh, wireless internet uh, wireless card. Mm -hmm. When you install it with a wireless network, then you can, instead of uh, connecting the IP cameras to the router, mm -hmm. you can connect to this QNAP uh, wireless network directly. Sure. So all the live view and recordings will be on your own private network. Mm -hmm. So it uh, can instantly form a more secure uh, surveillance network instead of uh, the more uh, exposed uh, public one. Yes. So also with the uh, new user interface, we have also integrated into the network and widget switch. Mm -hmm. So after you install the uh, QNAP wireless adapter to the NAS, mm -hmm. you will see this uh, wireless setup. Mm -hmm. So basically it's very easy to uh, set up the two wireless networks. So all your uh, tablets, computers, and the cameras can connect to this uh, wireless network mm -hmm. and then to access the NAS data or even go through the internet directly. Sure. Right. So also VPN, uh, VPN, what is VPN? Well, basically uh, VPN, okay, uh, we've talked about this many, many times, like Sam and Bernardi Sam. Uh, VPN is like your, uh, when you are outside or you are using your cell phone and you try to get some information or get a file from another places, another computer or NAS, uh, the internet like transaction, connection, well, basically that is explored. Uh, exposed on the public network, mm -hmm. so uh, if there are someone they want to hack into your system or get your detailed information, that is 
uh, that is okay. So uh, having a VPN is like driving inside of the tunnel and the helicopter is on the top of the, the like the tunnel, so you won't be you won't be able to see that what you are doing inside of the tunnel. So basically, the VPN is using the same concept. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you have uh, connect to the VPN, mm -hmm. you are using the VPN uh, is protocol to uh, go to another site to like upload or download something. The connection will be safe. Yeah. But <laughs> since there are a lot of VPN services in the market, so uh, okay, we'll talk about that later. But we can check for this topology map. Like the left hand side inside of our VPN service is like uh, what is the what is the like the, 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 the IP address uh -huh. and yes. or the or the computer or any other thing else is now connecting to the local VPN server and see we have several different server and the first one will be the QBelt which will which will also release in the the, the, the newer QTS version mm -hmm. and then from each of the servers we can check like where the the VPN server is connecting to mm -hmm. so the QBelt is going to the adapter 3 and then the uh, L2PP is going to the container network mm -hmm. and then the OpenVPN and PDP is now not connecting to anywhere so with this map we can easily to uh, manage and to monitor like what IP is going to what location through what kind of VPN service. Yes, so uh, once you uh, connect to a VPN network, it is just, it's like you are with the network network locally. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's very easy to uh, secure, safe, and then to, uh, you can access the, the data there. So it works. And uh, so uh, briefly, previously, Sam briefly touched the different VPN protocols. Mm -hmm. And so with the PPTP, is the oldest one, also easiest one, and also the not so safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think even the latest the iOS and the macOS also remove, remove the support. Okay, and uh, the next one is L2TP. This one is uh, the more secure one, the more modern one, and uh, it is uh, building on all the different operating systems. So you don't need the actual tools. You just need to check how to how to set it up in the operating system. Okay, and with the Open VPN, this is uh, the also a more secure technology. But uh, the setup is uh, more difficult for most users because uh, with OpenVPN, you need to, first of all, you need to install the client, the client software on your mobile phone or on your computer. Mm -hmm. okay? And then you have to download the certificate from the NAS, and the NAS OpenVPN here, and then import a certificate to your OpenVPN client for it to make a connection. So most people uh, may feel it too difficult. Okay, So because of this, we are working on the QBelt and we're going to launch it with uh, QTS 4.3.5. Mm -hmm. So QBelt is a kind of a, a new and you know, self-made VPN protocol. And it is also highly secure. You will see that uh, AES 256 option. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it is a uh, proprietary, so the trait okay, characteristics are not uh, so uh, obvious on the network. That means uh, you are protected against, <laughs> yeah, yeah, protected against some of the hackers on the net. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, uh, we are uh, working on the QBelt and then we'll release it. But uh, previously, remember, uh, I said uh, OpenVPN is also another safe connection, mm -hmm. but it is difficult to set up, right? And so with Open with uh, QBelt, uh, we are we are going to release uh, all the utilities for your platforms. Mm -hmm. For example. On your computers, uh, with your Mac or Windows, you can install a QBelt uh, application, yeah. and then we will help you connect to the NAS very, very easily. Just mm -hmm. probably one one single click. Yeah. And if you are on the iPhone or Android phone, don't worry about it. You can also download the app uh, from App Store, and then it can also help you easily connect to the NAS the VPN network. So uh, with this, we try to make it uh, more. Uh, Easier and um, safer connection with the VPN challenge. Yeah, so stay tuned. And uh, now, uh, besides all those previous uh, 4.3.5 new features, there are also many existing QTS features that uh, I think some of you will find it useful at this uh, price range, mm -hmm. the NAS. And the uh, first one is uh, because uh, it is an uh, Intel processor and uh, 2.0 gigahertz. And you can also install the some of the virtual machines such as uh, Windows or Ubuntu on the NAS mm -hmm. uh, with our virtualization. So you can run some of your 
your I call it pet projects like your software. You can it can be your test environment, mm -hmm. and then also uh, there are also QNAP uh, container station which allows you to install some of those uh, ready-made containers, mm -hmm. which is uh, the Linux uh, apps. So you can you will find many many of the applications that people have uh, made in the community. You can easily install on us. So basically, it opens up the possibilities on us. Okay. And uh, with the surveillance station, previously we mentioned about how you can connect the IP cameras to the NAS through the wireless network, right? Mm -hmm. Even with wire, it's okay as long as it's a network connection. So with the Q QNAP and QBR Pro, we support uh, thousands of cameras, mm -hmm. and uh, we give you basically when you get it, you get eight already eight and three camera channels. So it's already enough for you to form uh, a secure surveillance uh, area for your offices, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also purchase additional licenses to upgrade the uh, maximum channels. Mm -hmm. And if you have a USB webcam lying around from uh, Logitech or Microsoft, you can also install that to one of the available USB ports on the NAS, and then use one channel to record the webcam uh, footage. Yes. And uh, we'll have a surveillance station there available. You can install it and then use it with uh, some uh, fewer free channels and uh, some fewer max. But uh, we recommend to use QBR Pro, the new standard for the surveillance of course. Okay. Now, since it's only two bay, how can you expand the capacity, right? Of course, <laughs> JBA and our like expansion unit, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, we currently we recommend to use uh, virtual JBA because uh, uh, to be honest, uh, to buy uh, a NAS with an uh, unbased project is uh, more affordable. And then you can also use that NAS to share data yeah. or to pick up the NAS data. And also with our virtual JBAR technology, uh, we allow you to connect maximum to eight virtual JBAR connections. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will see not just one GB speed, you know, uh, TS251B has a PCI slot, right? Yes. So if you install a 10G card, you can also directly connect to a 10 GB NAS to have a super fast 10 GB connection with the virtual J bar. So it makes the file backup and the recovery also much easier. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now said, uh, let's look at the head-to-head -head competition. Oh, All right. Okay. So uh, okay. with the QNAP TS251B here mm -hmm. and compared to the uh, Synage DH251 Plus here, uh, so they share the same processor, and as far as the memory goes, the 251B uh, can be upgraded to maximum of 8 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. Where the other competition, uh, they only give you uh, one memory slot accessible by the user, so mm -hmm. it will be default 2 plus the additional one slot for 4 gigabytes on the website. Okay? And the biggest difference is uh, the TS251B offers the PCI slot. Uh, with a Gentle Byte 2. So with that, uh, you can install, for example, here, now you can support a 10GB network card. And what do you get with 10GB network card performance? You see, the read is over 600 megabytes per second, and the write is 400 megabytes per second, compared to the only 113 megabytes per second with a 1GB port. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you buy a TS251B, ensure the, you the maximum performance with the PCIe slot available, right? And then if you want to add the SSDs as a cache or two tier, also you can do it with a QN2 card on the PCI slot. Okay. And then uh, TS241B also gives you the HDMI output. So and to couple with the additional optional remote control, you can actually uh, play back the music the music video photos on your TV or monitor. Mm -hmm. And also you can output the Virtual machine picks up. So, for example, you connect a HDMI monitor, USB keyboard, mouse, then you can output the you use it use it as a, just like a virtual PC we call QB PC. So you can use a small computer to do some uh, Windows applications or Linux applications. And uh, with the more audio input output uh, for the audio based application from QNAP and the from the community. Mm -hmm. And last is a. Uh, Camera, you don't have to, to get you started, you don't have to spend more on the camera license if you, if you have more than two cameras in your environment. So because we give you a free eight camera channels, so you are ready to go with uh, uh, those cameras. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically, as you can see, this really uh, sets the high, what's that, high wall for the competition. <laughs>
yeah. it's difficult for them to cross over, of course. Yeah. Okay, so I think that will be all the introduction mm -hmm. for this for B, right? Yes. Yeah. And let's go back to the white. Mm -hmm. And after checking the you know the comparison, I think most of you will have already made your decision mm -hmm. by you know like buying a two 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 bay to be nice. mm -hmm. well, basically we have more flexibility of all the expansion unit and cars. So uh, if you are looking for a new two bay NAS for yourself, please consider it again. And thank you again, Jason, for yeah. uh, showing us the like the read and write yes, to yeah. Yeah, and yeah, with the PCI expansion as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also let us know the new things about our uh, QTS four point one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you want to see more about our Yes, two five one, or you want to check the video again? Please go here, lifemarketnet.com, and you can search the video by keyword, and also you can download the PowerPoint. And uh, we will see you next time on the Live Podcast. See you like the video. Bye bye. bye.